It's the NFL on EA Sports, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Finns and the Niners, and it comes your way next. From the host of Super Bowl 50 back in February of 2016, there's a look at the home of the 49ers, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Miami Dolphins and the San Francisco 49ers. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started, and we are underway from Santa Clara. Fielded right around the eight. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. San Francisco reading for their first drive of the game on offense, and in his ninth season in the league, six with the 49ers, it's Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback. And Jimmy Garoppolo has shown that he can be a Super Bowl quarterback, but his biggest problem, his ability to stay healthy and remain on the field. When able, he's a capable quarterback prone to winning games both in the regular and postseason. On play action, it's Garoppolo. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Two yards the loss. And now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Got his target, Samuel. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. 
And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. To throw is Garoppolo. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Call it a pickup of three and also now likely a punt on their opening drive. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Back deep is Tyreek Hill. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And here comes the Miami offense now, and it's the southpaw in his third season at the wheel for the Fins. Quarterback to a tongue of Iloa. Every quarterback in the NFL has a little bit of his own signature style out there, but for this guy, he really plays the game in a different way. It's led to a couple double takes from us up here as we see him as something truly unique. It's not that he's just the strongest passer or the best athlete to ever play the position. He just has a certain way of seeing the action and it allows him to make some special plays out there. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at the 20. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. First carry for Raheem Mostert to the 43, second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Throwing on second and eight, Tua. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. So five yards here, five on the play. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10, right at the 40. And they went the wrong way there, losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. From the gun, it's Tua. 
Quick hitter to Jalen Waddle. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game. It will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Tua. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Hassan Ridgeway busting through to get him for a loss of six. That's a ball he needs to let go of there. Wasn't the most time in the world to work through his progression, but NFL quarterbacks, they've got to sense the pressure. They've got that internal clock, and the ball has to be gone. And if you're not going to escape and run for it, you have to let it go before the pressure gets to you and puts you on the ground. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Another try after the first down sack. Tua, that's caught Waddle on the left side. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Well, safe to say the passing game has found a rhythm. He's now 4-4, four of four, but might need to be 5-5 five of five to keep this drive going here as they face a third down. And maybe perhaps you show a running play, right? Maybe a little play action here to go ahead and let him throw the ball downfield. I wouldn't get away from him flinging it because 4-4 four for four already? I think he's got a good chance of picking this one up here on third down. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will jump out to a 3-0 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. So first and 10 now from the 30. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. They'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence to traverse down the field. On first down, this is McCaffrey. He'll get it up near midfield to the 49 before being taken down. 
I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 44-yard line. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Garoppolo looks to throw. He's going to drop this down to McCaffrey. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 25-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Well, he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. On first down, Garoppolo completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. Nothing on that one, it'll be second down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out of the right side of the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. On second down, McCaffrey. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing is Garoppolo on third down. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range, no sense forcing anything, and he made sure he didn't. So Garoppolo off, coming on is the veteran Robbie Gold for the 49er field goal. The kick by Gold is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points, able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Thank you. 
Field goal's all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. So Miami coming out for their second drive. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Here's Tungabailoa on first and ten. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven. Past the 30 to the 32. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep, Ray Ray McLeod. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. Now Garoppolo over the middle, complete to Samuel. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. So from the 36 now, first and 10. to throw it's Garoppolo winds up and lets it go for Samuel and he's got it inside the 10 touchdown 49ers well, you're not going to hear Jimmy Garoppolo mentioned among the strongest arms in the league but that doesn't mean he can't beat you with a long one and I'm telling you nothing will let up a crowd more than a play like that here in the stadium all eyes were on the receiver streaking downfield, and you know everyone was thinking, throw it, he's open. What a connection there for the touchdown. And the final number on that throw, boy, it traveled an even 69 yards. Robbie Gold on for the extra point.
And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. Takes it at the seven. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll get nothing out of that one. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. The Dolphins on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. Tua sets up to pass it. Got a man complete. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. We have seen this before. And we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. And he is going to lose yardage here. Getting to the ball behind the line was Xavier Howard. The opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Here's Garoppolo to throw. Flush. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? No. No, not at all. So the sack of Garoppolo. And now what can they come up with on third and long? They'll look to throw here. 
And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. And that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. So a nightmare start to the drive as they're already staring at second and long. Now Tua just going to bat this forward on the end around. And a short gain across the 15 to the 17-yard line. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. It's brought in by Wilson. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. And that's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And some room to run now. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. Well, how many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty. You can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. Two and now on first down. They'll get this to his tight end, Gesicki. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second down and eight. Throwing now is Chugavailoa. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And that is incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. 
Now the veteran Thomas Morstead on to putt it away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And San Francisco gets set to go here. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at the 20. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him picks up three on that carry. Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And he's able to get out to the 32 right down there. 52 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Garoppolo now. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He lost four there, and it's third down. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. The Niners on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and five. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. Might have to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now on to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And it'll be Dolphin football. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start here with Gaskin. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. At the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run. But the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. From the 30 on second down, Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Tua finding Gesicki there for a Dolphin first. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. So 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Up the middle they go with Mostert. They'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Two are going to tap this forward on the jet sweep. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That one good for 26 and a first down. But just a simple tap pass, but it, it pays off in a big way. And sometimes the simple stuff causes the most problems for a defense because there's a breakdown in communication there. When that receiver goes behind the line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going in motion, someone either has to go with him or he has to be passed off to another defender. Somehow they didn't get that communicated well and it turned into a nice play. Running the counter with Moster. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Play action. Now it's Tua. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy toes if that one was completed. And they got to get to the 23 here on third. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Going for the deep ball. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill, 30 yards. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from evening this one up. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, man. Yard. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. now at 10 apiece as the kicks away this take it in at the goal line and ultimately he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25 as San Francisco's offense returns to the field as we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Garoppolo now, first down throw. His throw incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. They run with McCaffrey off the option. He takes this for three to the 29. 
Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Garoppolo to Ayuk, first down 49ers. All tied up at 10, two minutes left in the first half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there, second down. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. To throw again on second down, Garoppolo escaping the pressure right toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. As soon as I saw him break contain and get outside, my first thought and my eyes gravitated downfield because nowadays, most of these quarterbacks, when they do that, they want the big play downfield. They don't want to throw it short. In this case, he took the shot. It fell incomplete. Again, they'll throw with Garoppolo. To the sideline, he's got the catch, and he kept the feet in bounds. Well done. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Garoppolo. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. The sack there by Bradley Chubb. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Now a draw play to McCaffrey. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Third down, here's McCaffrey. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. So we have reached halftime here in a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Miami. And they were able to have some success throwing the football against the secondary. Look for that to continue as they try to break this deadlock. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets, this ball game tied, Charles. So as we start the third quarter, curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one. And we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the peewee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. Third quarter starts with a run from Mostert. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? From the 31, Tua. Catch made right side by Wilson. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Tua just going to bat this forward on the end of the round. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. Tua wants to throw it on second down. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Credit the sack to Fred Warner. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. On third and long, it's Tunga Bailoa. And going deep for Hill. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call. But for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Now Tua. And that is caught. Touchdown Miami. Raheem Mostert from 17 yards out. And the Dolphins have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. 
Well, we know he can run the ball. There he shows he has the ability to do a little bit more. That's what you call a complete player. A guy who can run it, catch it, probably can protect the passer when necessary, but his skills are best used when you get the ball in his hands. And that's the thing. When you've got an athlete like that, you want to get the ball to him in multiple ways, right? Without a doubt, because he often creates mismatches about who can cover him, whether he's coming out of the backfield or even lining up like a receiver. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that makes it a 17-10 score. So that drives seven plays in length, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. This one fielded at the five. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. Well, Charles, you and I said at intermission, feels like we're set up for a good second half. Well, the other side scored, and now it's up to them to answer. How do they respond here with their first drive of the second half? Well, bottom line is they just saw the ball go in the end zone against their defense, and they saw what good offense looks like. They believe they've got a good offense as well. Run the best plays you've got to the top performers you have and try to move that ball down the field for an answering score. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get them much at all. No, not at all. And that leaves them with third and long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. Think your best player with a play that he likes to run best. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Garoppolo looks to throw. And that is incomplete. Going to the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And yeah, we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Second down, here's Mostert again. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. 
Working the sideline here. Did he get the feet in? Yes, they say that he did. Nice job tapping both of them down. He's up now to 80 yards receiving in the ball game, and he's got a first down. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball. Kyle Shanahan doesn't care much for that last call, so out comes the red challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the decision to challenge does not pan out, and that's also going to cost him a timeout. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Running on first down with Gaskin. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They go back to the ground, this time Moster. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and they have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Meanwhile, Tua's throw is taken in by Waddle. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Couple of Alabama guys there. Tua to Waddle for the Miami first. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 36. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Vailoa out to his left. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense have other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. It's showtime, baby. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Tua sets up to pass it. 
over the middle and complete to Waddle. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Two on a throw again. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. They have the first down with that gain of four yards. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, They've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Here's Tongue of Iloa on first and ten. It's Hill complete. And they've got it inside the ten at the eight. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. Here's Mostert, and they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Second down, Gaskin. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. On play action, here's Tua. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. They'll go. It's Gaskin. And he's not going to get in. They stop him at the one. The run is turned away on fourth and goal from the two. And his 49er defense stands tall down near the goal line. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. They'll try to get the running game going with McCaffrey. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. They needed some breathing room. He gave it to him. 11 yards and a first down. Partner, I think that play echoed a short yardage run. I know they're backed against their own goal line, but when they stack the defensive line like that, if you find any type of a crease, you're up to the third level before you know it. So a little more space to operate now. First and 10 from right around the 12. 
How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. And he stopped immediately. Oh, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. They run with McCaffrey off the option, and he'll get this one up to about his 14. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Open man is Juwan Jennings. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A gain of 22. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Play action, Garoppolo. And he will find his man, Samuel. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 41. Back to the ground attack here, it's McCaffrey. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them and they really embrace him. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Garoppolo now. That is incomplete. He had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. It's a gain of four there and gives him a new set of downs. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Now Garoppolo. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I think we were both wondering if we were going to see them try and push it deep downfield, facing a one-possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. A jet sweep. Garoppolo taps it forward. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. And that is 
is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. So instead of fourth down, first down. Well, so much for winning the down you put a lot of emphasis on because third down is key for offense and defense. Instead, you're going to stay on the field and start a new set of downs. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. 90 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Garoppolo. And this one is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. The Niners on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. Here it's third and three. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. They were three for three converting on third downs on this drive, but that time didn't quite get there. Yeah, defensively, maybe they just said, we're tired of this. Time to make a stand. And if you really want to pick this one up, you have to go for it on fourth down. And typically on fourth down, the odds shift to the defense. Oh, look at this play call. And try to push his way forward, but I think he's going to be short. And he is short. Kyle Shanahan, an offensive mind, but his guys stopped up short. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. And to be frank, Charles, maybe they just got a little too cute there. Not just a little too cute, but maybe a bit overconfident. It almost felt like they felt like they could dial up anything there and it would work. And they were going for a big hitter on that play because you don't call that just to pick up short yardage. You're trying to take that one to the house. They dug deep in the playbook, probably wish they had not. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 13. They'll start on the ground with Moster. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. A tight game like this. Such a tough spot for the offense to be in. Even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line, they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell them to take care of the ball and try and move forward. And down he'll go at the 25. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Buying time to his left. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down. So he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. Here, they hope they can regroup and get something different going here on second down. On second down, Mostert. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. 
Throwing now is Chungavailoa. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by the former first rounder, Jimmy Ward. Partner, I think this one went awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. The interception sets them up with an opportunity to erase this fourth quarter deficit. Now, this series could very well determine our outcome. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. So after the INT, it's Garoppolo. And his throw is incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. And right side, they're going to go option here. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. Well, so much for that possession. Yeah, I think he tried to do a little too much there, partner. He tried to keep it himself. End up getting buried in the backfield, and that brings up fourth down. Now Garoppolo, got to have this one. Completes it to Samuel. And he is going to have the Niners first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Give them credit. They knew what they wanted to dial up on fourth. They executed it for nine yards, and the offense stays out there. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. 98 yards rushing for him now to this point. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. He'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Garoppolo going to try and throw on third. Caught on the slant. And the 49ers are going to be set up with a first and goal as they get the conversion on the third and inches. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. McCaffrey will get into the end zone for a 49er touchdown. 
And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from the tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Now gold for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. From the six. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Miami's offense set and ready to go. They no longer have the lead after that last touchdown. All tied up in the fourth quarter. And a chance for this offense to mount a potential game-winning drive right here. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 24. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. They're going deep for Hill. And got his man complete. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That one good for 37 yards. Running their plays over and over during the week can often get robotic for an offense. But on game day, they can often flow smoothly, as that one just did. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. They fake the handoff, now Tua. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. From the 36, Tua. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. If they get nothing else here on third down, it'd be a 53-yard attempt from this spot. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter time. And he missed it. It's no good. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. What a tough spot to miss a kick. Just an absolute letdown. Look, they got themselves in the field goal range. Gave them a chance to take the lead. They come up empty. And now you wonder, 
Will their offense ever see the football again? Yeah, because on the other side, one through the post, and this thing could be over. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Garoppolo on first down. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Able to avoid. Oh no, he lost the football. And yeah, this is picked up by the Dolphins. The 20. Five. And this is brought all the way back. A fumble recovery and taken to the house for a Miami touchdown. So many times, tight games decided by one big play. And a lot of times, of course, it's the offense. Here, it's the defense coming up huge. Yeah, and you know head coaches walk around locker rooms, walk around bench areas saying, guys, somebody make a play. It's a cliche, but it applies here. Sanders now to add the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And still just down one score. We'll see how big of a role that missed field goal plays because it, of course, could have pushed this to a two-possession deficit for them. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he's got Rome. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 122 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. They fake the give. Now Garoppolo looks to throw. Rolling to his left. He finds Kittle going across the field. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. The 
drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. A handoff left, McCaffrey. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They run with McCaffrey off the option. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. A brief pause in the action here as they tend to an injury. That's George Kittle shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. They need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. There's Garoppolo to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. Garoppolo to throw for it on fourth. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down. So let's sort this out. So obviously, they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. Gold to add the extra point. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. Nothing separating these two sides. 24 all our score as he sends this one away. This will be fielded inside to five. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Miami set to take over. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Going to the air, Tagovailoa. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for not. Pulling a gain of three on the play, and that will bring up second down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get up field with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That one, a first down pickup of eight. 
For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. On first down, they go with Mostert again. Give him seven yards on the carry, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. To his throw here, going to be caught by Wilson. And they're going to get this up to midfield. That's exactly what they were looking for. If they get another gain like that, they'll be right there in field goal range. And the tension building. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Tongue of Iloa. Open man downfield is Hill. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout. And yeah, they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. On first and ten, it's Mostert. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four. Up the middle they go with Mostert. That is brought down short. Two yards there, needed four. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive, take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to almost certainly win the football game. Sanders' kick is good, and the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. So there was a little meat on that bow, a little more than a chip shot considering the circumstances, but he's able to bang it home in what should be the game winner. And the key was getting him into a good position to kick from. I mean, if that's a 52-yarder, you're going to have some anxious moments, but kickers nowadays, you give them anything under 40, and they're automatic. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. Taken in at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. 
We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. And a fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall.